Today's topic is going to be the transition. This transition has four sides sloping or changing. Here I have an elevation view or also called a front view. And this is a plan view, sometimes called the top view. Typically, in simple triangulation, only the plan view is required when the fittings are in a parallel plane. That is, each opening is parallel to one another. The only piece of information that's not in a plan view is the length or the height of the fitting. That's where the elevation view comes in. It is stated at two and a half. This just shows you that the four piece transition has a top, a bottom, a right side and a left side. I will now start developing the top cheek. The bottom of the opening is four inches. In most cases, we try to find out the cut size. And in this fitting, we said that the fitting is two and a half inches tall, but each piece must be longer than two and a half inches, two and a half inches because they are all sloping or changing. And figuring out the amount of change is very important. The top cheek you can see in the plan view has a one inch slope. So by using a formula with one squared plus 2.5 squared, I have found that the length of this cheek to be 2.69 inches long. That is the true length of the, your top cheek. So I make a rectangle four by 2.69. And then I look at the plan view and I say I must be a half inch away from my left hand side to W and an inch and a half to locate X. And that should be two inches. This again will be the top cheek. As you can see in blue, top cheek from the plan view. Now let's go ahead and start the right side panel. Again, because it is a four by four square, the bottom BC is four inches. We know that it's an inch and a half slope. Therefore, the formula to figure out the true length will be one inch and a half squared plus 2.5 squared square root will equal 2.92. Two. So go ahead, draw the rectangle four
and up 2.92, which is 2 and 15 sixteenths. This represents the piece that you would be cutting in the shop out of metal. And start allowing your dimensions. This is one inch. X is one inch. In. We know the side is an inch and a half. You have now located X and Y. That was the right side development. Now let's go ahead and do the bottom. Start with a four inch line. And then you're gonna to need to figure out how much slope is happening on the bottom. That measurement right there would be an inch and a half. So there is an inch and a half slope or change. Therefore, the formula would be 1.5 squared plus 2.5 squared square root again equals 2.92 the only reason it's the same height as the right side is because of the slope is identical, one and a half inches. Now let's go and locate Y and Z, or Z. We know we're an inch and a half Then you want this is going to be two inches. If you go two inches, it leaves you with a half inch from the end. This is now your bottom piece. Let's do the last piece, which is your left side. You'll notice that the left side is only sloping a half inch. So it's 0.5 squared plus 2.5 squared square root would equal 2.54 inches. So let's make our rectangle four inch on the base between D and A and 2.54 or two and nine sixteenths high tall. This is D. This is A. This will be your left side. We got to locate the top portion. We know that this measurement was an inch and a half. Then our opening is two inches and the remainder will be one inch, which comes from right there, the front. This is your left side panel, or some of us some refer to this one as the short side, and the other right side would be the long side in this case. To sum this up, we have a top cheek, a bottom cheek, 
a right side or long side, short side or left side. It is always good practice to mark the inside of each pattern before assembling. Once assembled, double check all measurements.